Okay, everyone, I think we're ready for our panel discussion. This um, section is called From Intern to Guru. We've got here three really cool people that have all been um, Wired Sussex interns before. And that was a few years back when I, we ran our old program. And they're now actually mentors that you can get in touch with through our new intern placement program. But they're here to tell you about their journey, how they started out as an intern, and um, how they found the experience and where they've got to now. So it's um, really insightful, and it, hopefully you'll find it quite motivating. Um, I'll just introduce, first of all, we've got Digby, and then Mia, and then Joshua. So Digby's up first. Hi everyone, um, so I, my name is Digby Killick, I'm a digital consultant at Brilliant Noise. Um, I, I guess my internship was four years ago um, where I joined Oxbow Media over in Chichester uh, as their kind of SEO and I'm still in search today but um, I've gone a bit further than that really, it's, uh, that's my grounding but there's all kinds of marketing. Uh, my presentation today is um, uh, a little bit different, it's five tips from very wise people that I've learned at work. Uh, and hopefully these will be of use to you in your working life. Uh, so first thing is a disclaimer, which is some of these quotes might seem more famous than the people who said them. Uh, I'm passing on the people who actually passed the advice to me. So I think you might notice Carl Sagan under a different name and all that, but you know, just, just ignore that, go with it. Um, so the first one's from my friend Andy Keach, who was actually uh, an original teacher when I did the internship scheme four years ago. And it's, there's no such thing as a stupid question, which uh, this basically means don't, if you're starting out in your career or even if you're more experienced and you're doing, having a meeting, uh, don't be the person who doesn't understand something and keeps stum because you feel like you might be an idiot asking a question. Asking a question never makes you seem stupid. It always makes you seem intelligent and engaged. And the fact that you don't know something doesn't mean that, you know, again, it's not a silly thing to do. Uh, following on from that, Always question the brief. Uh, there's been so many times when uh, you've been past a piece of work and you've been told you've got to deliver it, and uh, you like this pressure makes you want to just get the work, get it done, impress the people you're working for. But if you're not confident in what you've been given and the situation you're working in, you'll find that you'll get halfway through the piece of work and you'll ask a critical piece of question and a critical question, and the piece of work you've done has gone in a completely wrong direction. Always, always clarify every single point. Uh, and more on the questions, uh, when, if, you're, if you're feeling confident to write a blog post, uh, phrase it as a question. So for a long time, I would get really bogged down by the pressure of trying to make sure all my blog posts were fact-checked, that they wouldn't upset anybody, that they were totally, totally 100% concrete. Um, but if you uh, see something you like and you have an opinion, you have an idea, just phrase the whole thing as a question. Say, oh, isn't this interesting? Oh, that, yeah, well, I wonder what that means. It, not only does it make you seem kind of, it means you can write it without the pressure, but it opens discussion for the comments. Um, this is very important. No one's going to die in most situations. Uh, so that's, uh, <laughs> no, matter how, no matter how bad things feel, um, just it's kind of for a sanity check. Like, it's, it's going to be fine. If we work in digital media, uh, you're just, you're, the client will come back, they might be unhappy, you can manage that situation, you can make them happy again, and you can deliver a great piece of work. Uh, and this is really cringy, and I really shouldn't have put this on stage, but um, this is something I learned from a productivity talk. It's really American, and I hate it, but it's amazing. Uh, so uh, there will be times when uh, everything seems to be going against you, and the, uh, the trick is, is, when you're in the meeting, is just to stand up in front of everyone else and just go, how fascinating, what can I learn from this? And you look like an idiot, you feel like an idiot, everyone's laughing at you, but it completely changes the meeting. It means that you've reversed the direction it's going in, everyone's re-engaged, and there are things to learn. Uh, it's kind of a thing, it's, it goes back to a thing called strategic acceptance, which is the bad things have happened, you can't change that, what can you do to improve the situation? And those are my top tips. Cool. Oh, a bit short, sorry. All right. Cool. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Mia, um, and I am talking to you uh, from a partnership or a company called The Contrast Collective. Um, and I'd just like to talk to you very briefly about what I do, where I started off, um, and why an internship is so great to do. 
So this is the Contrast Collective showreel, so just a little bit of shameless self-promotion here, just to sum up um, what I do and a little bit of our work. So that was just a little snippet for you of our show reel. Okay, so where did I start off and uh, how did I get to do the internship? Okay, so I actually studied Egyptian archaeology at university. Um, so I knew how to read hieroglyphs, but absolutely no other transferable skills whatsoever. Um, I knew I wanted to do something to do with film and media, um, but any work experience or internships I'd done were only for a week and weren't really sufficient time to learn anything, kind of get to know anybody that worked there. So I was a little bit stuck in Brighton, working in a shop um, and looking for somewhere to work. Um, through sort of Googling and kind of word of mouth, I found out about Wired Sussex um, and about the internships, internship scheme that they were offering. Um, ended up applying and had an interview with Joe Coyne, who some of you would have heard earlier from Fat Sam Productions. Um, and how did I get it? Well, basically, I was sort of tried to be myself, and in the end, my degree actually helped me stand out, mainly because I wanted to know why on earth I studied that at university, but also sort of having a passion in any subject translated to meeting somebody and wanting to work for them. So, the internship at Fat Sam Productions. So, Fat Sam Productions are a video production company, as you probably would have heard from Joe. Um, the internship was a month, and it was basically working with Fat Sand um, as a production assistant, so doing things like organizing filming, booking kit, booking crew, um, and getting to do a little bit of social media, but more importantly, kind of getting real experience, having like a solid chunk of time at a company so I could show them what I could do, get real responsibility, get my foot in the door, um, all things which are quite difficult to do in a week. Um, so that was why it was sort of really good. And also, there was no better way to get all of that than a solid internship. Um, and it was paid, <laughs> which I think is quite important to, to point out. Um, it was a paid internship, so I could earn money, learn, really get stuck into the video production industry. So here are some of the uh, clients that Fat Sam work with. Um, I was involved in all sorts of projects. One of the first things I did um, was sort of helping with the filming of the Brighton Festival a few years ago. Um, I've been involved with Visit Brighton. Um, you'll see O2, uh, worked for Love Film. Um, so it was really great introduction to sort of all the different types of businesses which need video. So what did that lead to? So I ended up being offered a permanent position at Fat Sam Productions, which was amazing. Um, mainly because having worked there for a month, I could show them what I could do and basically create my own role. Um, show them, look, if you don't hire me, this is the work that you won't have been done. <laughs> um, and it ended up being sent on shoots more, um, working for different types of clients, uh, giving more responsibility, 
um, and it allowed me to learn what I like um, and, and basically learn that it was producing that I wanted to focus on. Uh, and eventually, at the end of that, I ended up going freelance, um, which sort of leads me to what I do now. Uh, so I am a, well, trying to be <laughs> a freelance producer and a production coordinator. Um, basically, people have different ideas about what a producer does, but essentially, I'm sort of part of the parcel creatively and logistically that makes a film happen. Um, I get to work with a great range of people uh, as a freelancer. Um, I work with Fat Sand very often, which is amazing. Um, also work with co other companies here, um, companies in London. Um, so it's, it's really great to be able to kind of see those steps from the internship. Um, some pictures down below there of a film recently worked on with Fat Sand Productions, actually. Uh, went out to Mexico and made a film for Small Batch Coffee um, about where your coffee comes from, which was a great project. So that brings me on to the Contrast Collective. Um, so the Contrast Collective is a filmmaking partnership uh, between myself and Sim Warren. So between the two of us, um, he's director, cameraman, I'm a producer, coordinator, um, we work together to make films um, and bring mainly sort of our background of our passions. So Sim's background is in skating and mine obviously being Egyptian archeology, span you'll notice kind of the backgrounds of these slides starting to make a bit more sense now. So it's just a some few screen grabs of some films that we've worked on. Um, so you see the top left, um, you start to see surfing theme as well. Um, a couple of music videos um, and sort of middle left and the sort of bottom right, um, two videos that we made which were given Vimeo staff picks. So for anyone who sort of knows what that is, we were really happy to get that. So what I'd like to leave you with. Okay, so first thing is, um, I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for the internship. It's as plain as simple as that. Um, it was my sort of first foot in the door. It was my first step into a career, into film and into video. Um, it enabled me to become a part of the Brighton creative industry and, and sort of part of a team, but also get to know everybody in Brighton, other cameramen, editors, filmmakers. Um, I would say go for what interests you and doing this and being yourself will hopefully mean that you know, you'll get that first chance to work in an industry and do a job that you really love. Um, and the very last thing I'd like to leave you with, other than thank you for listening to me talk 100 miles an hour, is uh, our film How Many, um, just because I think video is the best way to end it. Thank you. Our movements are deeply set in twisting in spinning, it was the motion that I fell in love with. I have always had a recurring dream where I've been able to instigate infinite spinning, and that has been solely based on the influence of skating. I was able to spin just for forever, just an inch off the ground. You feel the momentum, it's almost like when you're pulling your leg around and you're stirring yourself in this state of consciousness that you're feeding it there and then, it's happening, that's reality. Was that lucid? Was, did I control that? It's the craziest thing. Lots of skaters have that dream, that dream of constant spinning. I could go to bed tonight, people from all over the place go to bed. How many are dreaming about skating? And in that specific way. How many? Uh, hello, my name is Joshua Routh. I work with COGAP and I'm a senior producer there. And five years ago, I came to this exact jobs fair. I didn't have a job and I had absolutely no idea how to get a job. Um, thanks to some very sound advice I received, I, I very shortly after did get a job at, at COGAP where I currently work. Um, and, and I like it very much. I've been there for the last six years, so it only seems fair that I'm standing here now to um, let you know some of the highs and lows of, of that process. Um, so I, I left university with a sort of jack-of-all-trades degree. I was doing bits of animation, bits of video production, bits of uh, development, bits of design. 
um, but, but jack of all trades was exactly the word. Um, and I, I'd done quite well at university, so it felt to me like it stood to reason that when I went into the world of jobs, I should aim high and a, a apply for something which was the best job I could possibly see, or so I thought at the time. Um, this went on for a, for a year or so. I think I got one interview in that time, and it was just appalling. I had absolutely no idea about what employers wanted from me. Um, so I went back to university, I got another degree, thought that might help, um, and went through the same process again, effectively. I spent a year or so applying for slightly less ideal jobs, and this time didn't even get a, a single interview. So I felt pretty glum. I felt like I didn't really understand the process. Um, I was working in a call centre here in Brighton, uh, and my main aim was to, to stay here in Brighton and not have to go back to London to, to work in digital media. So I googled uh, Brighton digital jobs. I saw Wired Sussex and, and COGAP, um, the, the agency. I'd never heard of COGAP, um, but I, I did see a lot of the clients they were working for looked very interesting. So they were working with uh, the, the British Museum, the British Library, Apple. I'd certainly heard of these names, so I, I thought it worth pursuing. So I applied for the, for, for the job. Um, and the rough process, um, I don't know how, how similar the process is now, but for me, uh, I got a, a phone interview which lasted for about two minutes. There were no technical questions whatsoever, and I felt sure that I'd screw this up because it was so, so quick. Um, as it turns out, there were about 100 people applying for that position at the time, so it was very competitive, and it was so quick just because they had so many people to get through. Um, there was then a, a, an interview in the office, which again felt quite rushed. I, I didn't really feel like I was being asked in very much detail about the technical side of things. Uh, but I sort of connected with the people there. They seemed like a nice bunch of people. Um, and, and shortly after, I was told that I, I had the job for a 12-week for in, paid internship, which is wonderful. Um, I asked some of my colleagues uh, before coming here today why I succeeded in that interview. And the answer Hella gave was it was to do with sincerity of intent. So there are lots of very, obviously, it's a very competitive position to get. Um, but if you can just be genuine with what you're trying to get out of it and, and connect with the people in the interview room, then I think that's, that's half the battle. So what did my career at COGAP involve for the first 12 weeks? It, it really was everything. I spent the first week cutting out pictures of whales, the second week editing some audio um, clips for a project we were working on then, uh, and then starting to do some sort of sitting on client meetings, taking, taking minutes, that sort of thing. Um, at the end of that 12-week period, there was a project that we hadn't quite finished yet, so I was commissioned to stay for an extra month, and then that happened again, and then that happened again. So my foot was in the, no in the door enough for it to be convenient to keep me on, basically. Um, after six months or so, I, I was uh, given a full position as an assistant producer. So production, I didn't really have any concept of. I didn't really understand what a, a producer was. I certainly didn't leave university with the intent of becoming a, a producer. Um, I guess the, the quick way of explaining it is that within the office there are designers, there are, there are techies, there are user experience people, and the producers pull all those different strands together to make, some, make sure something is delivered on time and on budget and to, to a high standard. So that didn't seem particularly appealing to me, but then in hindsight, as a sort of jack of all trades degree, it was just perfect because I can do bits of animation, I can do bits of development and design, and still retain my, my finger in all of those pies without abandoning any, any of them. Um, after spending a, a couple of years as a producer, as an assistant producer, excuse me, I became a producer and then a senior producer, which I am now. And, and it's very much the same thing. So we're pulling the different strands of design and tech and UX together to create something which is, which is valuable for the client. Um, so I would very much recommend, recommend the um, intern process. I, I genuinely would not be here without it, certainly not as a, as a producer. Um, I imagine I would have pursued a career in animation or something and then got tired of that and, and moved on to something else. So um, I highly recommend you, you apply for these positions. Um, three tips to go away with. Uh, that, that first one of sincerity of intent, I think, is all important. You can make your application as targeted as possible, so it goes a very, very long way if you know a little bit about the people who are interviewing you and the particular projects that they've worked on even, so you can ask questions at the end of the interview about those projects. Um, and also, just don't, don't be an asshole. It, it does happen, but people leave university, as I'm sure I did, uh, feeling quite smug about the whole affair, feeling like I, I own the place, and that, that obviously doesn't pay off. So try and connect with people and just, just be decent. Okay, that's it. Brilliant. Thank you so much to our three panelists there. I hope they've really given you a good insight about internships and. Um, 
even urged you to uh, get motivated and apply for some. Um, we've got time for a few questions now, so we're just going to take a few minutes, and I'm going to wander around with the mic. So, um, as Digby said, there's no such thing as a stupid question, or his quote that he shared. So. Um, Please put up your hand because there really isn't and um, this is your chance to really get some valuable information through. Okay, I've got the mic now. So who would like to answer the question first? Come on guys, no such thing as a stupid one. I think I've probably got some questions then. If, um, if no one else has, I'll keep looking around. But. Um, Probably Digby first. I was, I was just really wondering, um, were you sort of left on your own to get on with things, or like how did it work out? How were you supported and um, guided through it? Um, so in my first job, it really was because uh, uh, it was a very small agency. I think I was like the, the seventh em employee, well, intern, and uh, they were really building out their digital stuff. So I, it really was uh, for me. Uh, uh, kind of, we need this, can you research this, find out how we should be doing this. So it, the company I was in was learning at the time that I was learning, so it was, it was kind of a perfect opportunity for me to go and research a practice, go back to them and suggest, well, should we be doing this? And so my, my mentor, uh, my manager, was uh, kind of tasking me with researching different industries, different disciplines, coming back and giving kind of a plan of how we should do things, and then he would input from, uh, a business perspective, uh, how I should be doing that, and um, like how long I should be spending on it, and what, and kind of asking me the pressing questions, which are, what are we going to get out of this? What's the return on this? Which is always a good thing to know. Who else has got a question? Remember, this is your golden opportunity, so uh, use the guys that are here. Is it up to me again, then? All right, so, okay, I'll direct this at Joshua, I think. Um, did you feel ready for a proper job after just six weeks or 12 weeks or I'm not can't remember how long your internship was for it was it was 12 weeks for okay. me okay uh, and no I didn't so I certainly couldn't have gone directly from the internship to a to a full paid job on my own without support um, I think one of the advantages of the, the internship is that I was able to try out lots of different departments and, and tasks so I was doing parts of design parts of tech parts of, uh, of production but that meant I wasn't fully up to speed on any of them so I would say, no, tw 12 weeks alone is not enough to, to be fully um, up to speed, but it's enough to, to learn how to learn, if you see what I mean. So you can um, take it from that point on your own. And to, to open doors, I, I imagine. I mean, if, if not offered an opportunity after that, then you, you have sort of much, much more knowledge and much more, much more contacts to be able to go on from there. Absolutely, and, and that's certainly a bit of advice I would give is to, to make as many contacts while you're in that position as possible, uh, be it professional contacts or using LinkedIn or just going to the pub with people after work to, to see what other things they're up to um, and just to, to build your contact base like that. Brilliant, yes. A lot of business does get done in the pub, believe it or not, in this sector, so um, <laughs> please get involved with all of those events even if they seem like casual ones because you might just make the contact that you need to get the career. Who else has got a question? Yes. Can I just uh, get through? Uh, I have a question for Mia. Um, what kind of revenue does uh, your job uh, generate? Uh, how do you fund your projects? Uh, and is this a full-time job for you? Hello. OK, so revenue, I can possibly answer that question. <laughs> um, mainly because. The way that Contrast Collective works is it's more like a, a partnership than a company. So sort of a lot of agencies, uh, sort of production agencies and advertising agencies, you might see like directed producer duo. So that's what I would explain Sim and I are. And having said that, what that means is a lot of the work that we do comes through production companies. So, so for example, Fat Sam Productions, their client was Small Batch Coffee. So Fat Sam Productions brought Sim and I in for example, to work with them to do it. And we do have some people that we work with directly, um, but at the moment, we're happy going through production companies. Um, it's, it's, it's nice to kind of do it that way because they've built their kind of client database. Um, that film you saw at the end, how many, was a personal project. Um, so how we sort of managed to fund that was off our own backs. 
Um, and by means of some miracle, some contacts that were willing to lend us a camera sort of for the weekend. Um, but it's, you know, it's all about sort of asking questions. And the answer is, I guess I do that 50% of the time. And then being a freelancer the other half of the time. So this week I worked sort of two days, a company in London. Next week I'm working for Vatsand. So it's a little bit of a mixture of the two. Thanks a lot. Hopefully that's a long answer, sorry. So I think the message um, Mia gave there is that um, there's no shortage of work for freelancers. So no. um, <laughs> that can possibly be a route that you might want to get into. Um, and basically, they've given us some really helpful tips there. I think um, we should all give them a round of applause. And also to add that these guys are now going to be on the um, intern placement program stand at the back of the room. So if you've got any further questions you might be too shy to have asked now, then do go up the back because they'll be able to speak to you. So thanks, guys. <laughs>